Bethesda, Maryland is one of DC Metro's most popular suburbs and certainly the most popular on the Maryland side of the line. We're gonna cover what makes Bethesda so popular, where you would live, play, eat, work, shop, all the things in between, and why if it's not on your list, it should be on your list of burbs to consider. Now, starting off, where exactly is Bethesda, Maryland? If you look on the map here, you're gonna see it's northwest of DC. It borders it, so it's a very easy commute into town whether you drive or take the metro. Now, say commute-wise, what, what are you looking at for Bethesda? If you're driving downtown Bethesda to downtown DC, you're looking at 30 to 45 minutes on average don't count it being less than 30 minutes just because traffic is the thing here. If you're taking the Metro though, you do get some relief. It's about 20 minutes on the Metro. Now, in terms of Metro access, what does Bethesda have for you? You've got three Metro stations in Bethesda. You've got Medical Center at NIH, you've got the Bethesda station itself, and you've got, we'll call it uh, a Bethesda location, even though technically it's in Chevy Chase, the Friendship Heights station. You've got three stations all on the red line, all which take you right into downtown DC very easily without having to change lines. Okay, getting into one of the big draws of Bethesda, shopping. Now, if you stick with me here, if you follow Wisconsin Avenue out of town, it becomes Rockville Pike. That section is downtown Bethesda. That part of downtown Bethesda, if you want a more urban lifestyle, if you want faster pace, you want everything walkable, an area you're gonna consider. It's gonna have uh, luxury condos, apartments, and in here you've got a ton of restaurants, shops, bars, things like that. Boutique stores, all walkable, even grocery stores, all right there for you. Now, just west of that, you're gonna find Bethesda Row, which mirrors a lot of those uh, amenities. You're gonna have higher end stores, you're gonna have an Apple store, you're gonna have open courtyards, a lot of restaurants with access outdoors, a lot of walkability. Uh, since COVID too, they actually closed down some of the areas where cars went through and made them completely pedestrian friendly. So there's a lot of things that are just walkable between Bethesda Row, and downtown Bethesda, and it's gonna have your highest concentration of condos and apartments and luxury living, everything extremely walkable, where developers always talk about creating an, an environment where you can live, work, play, eat, shop. Between Bethesda Row, downtown Bethesda, it checks all the boxes for that. If that's the kind of life you're looking for, there's even schools close by, everything is right there for you. You do not need a car if you're looking at this section of Bethesda. Now, outside of this area for shopping, there are there is a very large mall, Montgomery Mall. It's west of, this main section here, this is gonna find your Macy's, your Nordstrom's, you're gonna have food court with Shake Shack, things like that in it, a Cheesecake Factory. There's even a Tesla at Montgomery Mall. Now, if you're looking for other shopping, outdoor experiences, if you go just north of Bethesda, we're cheating a little bit here, it's called North Bethesda, but for me, it is and always will be Rockville. You've got the Pike and Rose Shopping Center there. That's gonna have some higher end uh, stuff into it. You've got a boutiques, you're gonna have restaurants, you're gonna have outdoor spaces available to you. It has an iPic movie theater, which has IMAX and 3D. There's even a Bark Social, so if you have a dog and you wanna go off leash and grab a beer and meet some people, it's a great spot for that. Now between where Pike and Rose is and where Bethesda proper is, even though Bethesda is an unincorporated census designated place, which is a big mouthful to say, you've got the White Flint area, that area, was a mall, it's been torn down, it's under development plans right now, but in the near future, there's gonna there are plans to make that similar to a Pike and Rose where you're gonna have outdoor shopping, restaurants, walkability, condos, apartments, all that moving into there. So I would expect a lot of construction and traffic between Pike and Rose and that section of Bethesda where White Flint is. So those are opportunities in the future for you if you're looking to invest in the area. Okay, and piggybacking off of shopping, going to theaters, you've got a bunch of options available to you in Bethesda. You've got things like Landmark Theaters, which is right off of Bethesda Row near downtown Bethesda. That is a has a full service bar, shows indie films as well as full features. You've got Roundhouse Theater for plays. You've got just up the street, the Strathmore in uh, Rockville, i.e. North Bethesda. That does live music performances. And if you have kids like I do, the uh, Imagination Stage is in downtown Bethesda. Great options for you, a bunch of performances designed for children as well as summer camps in the summer. So a lot of options available to you for entertainment in addition to shopping in Bethesda. All right, and going into real estate. Now, where are you gonna live when you are in Bethesda, right? Downtown Bethesda, Bethesda Road, that's your highest concentration of condos, but there's also uh, how single family homes that are nearby that are walkable to it. So median price points for condos, the last 12 months in Bethesda, you're looking at $315,000. So not outrageous there, but that's not the full story. You go to townhouses, there are few townhouses in Bethesda, but they are there. Your median price point's 980,000, almost a million. And then the median price point for single family homes is at 1.4 million in Bethesda. Now, we've covered other um, in other videos, actual neighborhoods for it. You should see a link for that. If you want a more in-depth look at other neighborhood options available to you, 
I'd encourage you to watch that video. It'll show you the inside of them and what their makeup is. But um, I would say a lot of where you choose to live in Bethesda is dependent upon your lifestyle and your phase of life. If you want rolling hills, gated driveways, you don't want to talk to your neighbors much, there are neighborhoods for you. If you want to have a close-in tight community, you want to be walkable to school, there are neighborhoods for you. If you want to be in an urban area, live in a condo, have everything luxury, high-end, walkable to you, absolutely, that's an option for you as well. Now, talking a little bit more about the single family, uh, what you have in Bethesda is you don't have a ton of space. There have been few developments going in recently. We covered in another video, which you see a link for, Amelin. That is a partnership between Toll Brothers and TriPoint Homes. They built some townhouses and some single family homes, certainly on the luxury end, above the median price points we're talking about. But outside of that, if you're looking to do single family homes and you want anything new, you're looking at what we call a teardown here, where you buy a lot, you, there's a house on it, maybe you fix it up, more than likely not, you tear it down and you build a new house. So when you see that price point at 1.4 million for the median for a single family home, that is not a true and complete picture of the real estate of Bethesda. It is actually worth significantly more than that once you factor in the value of the home that goes on there. So what happens is a builder, maybe they find a lot, maybe they get under contract, but they don't close on it. They have their buyer close on that lot. You see that register typically anywhere between 700,000 to a million, maybe 1.1, depending upon the lot size in the neighborhood. But from there, there's no recordation of the actual construction cost. So maybe you spend 150 grand, 200 grand clearing the lot. Maybe you spend 500,000 to a million or more building the house on top of it. So you see builders when they take a house from concept to completion, it's generally over $2 million or pushing that number. So that 1.4 million, that's the median price point for what's been sold, but that is not necessarily the complete picture of the value there. So if you're looking to build or buy new in Bethesda, just know that it's gonna cost more than that 1.4 number. All right, and what does the cost of living look like now that we know the housing picture? The answer is not cheap, friends. If you look at the graphic with me on screen here, you can see it's almost 90% more expensive than the national average across the board, with housing leading the way at 3.6 times the national average for housing. Now, there are other things like regular goods and services that are more expensive here as a result. Now, why is it so much more expensive to live in Bethesda than the rest of Maryland or the national average as a whole? Well. There are a lot of jobs here that are high income earning. You've got really large companies like Marriott, Lockheed Martin. You obviously have NIH, the federal government here, really large employers with high income earners. In other things like Total Wine and More is headquartered here. You've got a lot of financial institutions here. It's a very large banking area. You've got things like Eagle Bank that's headquartered here. You've got Chevy Chase Bank that used to be headquartered here until it was acquired by Capital One and became Capital One Bank. So you've got all these high income earners in the pot together competing for the same real estate, driving up the pricing across the board as we've seen in other areas of DC and other areas of the country where you have a high concentration of high income earners, you can expect to see higher housing costs and general costs across the board. All right, now going into schools. Are the schools good here? Well, I can't actually answer that question. I can only give you third-party information. Otherwise, I violate a whole bunch of housing rules. So according to just.com, Bethesda schools are great. They're highly competitive. The high schools here rank very highly. All three high schools are in the top 10 in the state of Maryland. And I know from news reports and anecdotal stories, a lot of people will move here, try to get in those the track for those three high schools. And you are starting to see some overcrowding in some neighborhoods for their elementary schools. And so you have Montgomery County, which Bethesda is a part of, looking into either rezoning some schools or increasing and building more elementary schools to ease some of the overcrowding you're starting to see with the demand for the school system here because, because it is so popular and it is so highly ranked. All right, and getting to one of our favorite sections, it is parks and recs available to you in Bethesda. Now, according to the Trust for Public Land, 87% of people who live in Bethesda are within a 10 minute walk to a park. There are a lot of parks available to you as well. There are 31 parks and playgrounds in Bethesda, and Bethesda doesn't actually cover a ton of area. So you've, even in downtown Bethesda or Bethesda Road, where we talked about where you might have condos or some single family homes, those are walkable to parks, as well as the rest of Bethesda that's in neighborhoods or more established areas that are a little bit more spread out, those are also walkable to many parks and playgrounds. And because it's a part of the Montgomery County system, you can do the Montgomery County parks um, in the summer and do a whole bunch of camps and things like that to keep your kids busy if that's the phase of life you're in. It's also accessible to the Capitol Crescent Trail, which is a seven mile trail that goes from Georgetown all the way up to Bethesda. It used to go to Silver Spring, but that has since been closed to the Purple Line construction, which is scheduled to finish in 2027. But I wouldn't hold my breath on that. That has been constantly delayed 
And I would think it's going to get delayed past 2027 if there's a track record of, of failure, which there is on that project being completed. So um, Capital Crescent Trail, tons of options for you there. It actually connects to a whole bunch of other trails and networks around the entire uh, DC metro area. So you can get to many places on a bike or running, things like that. Now, on top of that, if you're a golfer, there's a ton of options for you, Bethesda. And if, and if you are watching this video, you may already know them if you're actually a hardcore golfer. Now, the golf courses in Bethesda are Burning Tree, Bethesda, Kenwood, and the big one being Congressional, which has held multiple U.S. Opens. It's going to host the PGA Tour in 2031 and the Ryder Cup in 2036. All right, guys, that is Bethesda in a nutshell. If you want more specific information about neighbors of Bethesda, there's a video right here for you. And if you have any questions for me about your move in or out, my information is below as well. And until next time, I hope to see you around town.